Good morning and welcome to this, our worship service coming to you from Trinity Lutheran Church here in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm Pastor Gary Schuske and it's my pleasure to welcome you here. Welcome all of you from our community of Greater Rhine Main here in Germany and also a word of welcome to all of you that are joining us from all around the world this morning. It is a blessing that we can gather here in this way. If you're joining us for the first time this morning, I'd like to give a few thoughts about ways you might worship from your home. Feel free to fast forward to this portion if you've heard these before. And when I'm done with these announcements, naturally you can pause the video to gather some things if you'd like to do so. First thing we recommend is setting up kind of a worship area in your home. Uh, draw the chairs up near the television, that sort of thing. Find a candle or two. Light those candles, reminding us of the light of the world. And while you're at it, why not find a flower or a plant? Again, reminding us of the new life that we have in Christ. I encourage you to have your Bible handy so you could look up some Bible passages along the way. And as we do here in church, I encourage you to minimize distractions, to uh, turn off your cell phones, for example. And as we do in worship here, stand and sit pray and sing and be part of the service in all of those ways. With those few thoughts of instruction, let's take just a moment now in silence, preparing our hearts for worship. We begin with our prelude. service now continues with confession and absolution. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us. To so make a light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. O God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. pray together. Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit, that, confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led in all truth to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now for our Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is from 18th chapter of Ezekiel, verses 1 to 4 and verses 25 to 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten so grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine, the soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine, the soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed, and thus what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. We speak our psalm responsibly. 
To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We now have our epistle reading. The epistle reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith. I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you can tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. 
And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We have our hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Our text for this morning is the Gospel reading from Matthew, the 21st chapter, read a few moments ago. A good friend of mine tells a great story from his childhood. One day when he was a small boy, his grandmother was babysitting him. And on that day, this little boy decided of all things that it would be fun to literally run along the keys of the family piano. When his grandmother explained she didn't like that and he had better stop, he said something to her that we've all said at some point in our lives. He said, you're not the boss of me. He always ended the story by saying simply, turns out she was. Now how that boy found out that grandma was the boss, well, I'll leave that to you to imagine out for yourself. My friends, it's a question of authority. And even if you're someone that loves authority, that loves things to be organized and everything in place, still, inside every one of us, there's that little voice that wants to call out, you're not the boss of me. Today in Matthew, it's a question of authority, specifically of Jesus' authority. Now let's kind of step in the picture here for a moment, a bit of the, the background. What is going on here in this scene? By this part of Matthew chapter 21, Jesus and his disciples are now in Jerusalem. It is the last week of Jesus' life. He knows that, but his disciples haven't quite figured it out yet. Right before this scene, Jesus does two very powerful things. First of all, he walks in the temple that day and he chases out those that were buying and selling and he turns over the tables of the money changers. Just for a moment, imagine how they were reacting. And imagine how the crowds around them also reacted. On the other hand, we're told that the blind and the lame came to Jesus and he healed them. Again, imagine their reaction. Imagine the reaction of the people around them. It is in the shadow of these two happenings, these two events, you might say, that now the chief priests and the elders come up to Jesus to ask him a question. Actually, they ask him two questions. 
By what authority do you do these things, and who gave this authority to you? My friends, I want you to listen to them closely, because I'm not so sure they're really looking for an answer. I think they may actually have had some other motive, perhaps. Now, Jesus answers them in typical Jesus style. You know how often Jesus likes to answer a question with a question. He says basically this, the baptism of John the baptizer, does that come from heaven or does it come from man? Dear friends, this is a much deeper question than it first sounds. Not just a question of baptism, we need to remember today that it was John. John the baptizer who said one day, soon coming after me is one who is mightier than me. And one day he would point at Jesus and say these incredible words, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The question about who John is, the question about John's ministry, is really finally a question about Jesus' ministry and about Jesus' authority. Now watch those chief priests and elders. It's almost as if they gather in kind of a, a huddle, maybe from some sort of sporting match or event. And what they talk about tells us all we need to know about them. They are not looking for the truth. They start here. Suppose, they say to one another, suppose we say that John's baptism came from heaven, then Jesus is going to say to us, then why don't you follow him? Why don't you acknowledge the truth of what he taught, that I am the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? For those religious leaders, they think to themselves, absolutely not. We can't do that. No way. But on the other hand, they are aware that John is very popular and Jesus is very popular and the temple is crowded that day. And if they say that John's baptism just came from men, they are afraid of a riot right before them. They can't have that. No way. And so they come to Jesus, listen closely to their answer. They say, we don't know. I say, way to take a stand. Listen to how Jesus responds. Then I will not tell you by whose authority I do what I do. Jesus doesn't have to answer them. Why? Because he does have authority. My friends, the question of authority is one that's part of our lives and our day as well, isn't it? Every day, many of us get involved in talking and in arguing. And it is my prayer that we're also praying about authority, maybe about those that we want to have an authority, or perhaps those we would rather not have in authority. I know we have those conversations every day. But today, let's draw things in just a little bit. Let's simply talk about authority as it relates to matters of God, to matters of faith. Because right now in our world, the question of who Jesus is, the question of his authority still goes on. Is Jesus the promised Messiah, the one who was to come, or is he just a good moral example? You know, a good teacher, maybe just a good guy. And what about the Bible, the Word of God? Is the Bible just a collection of good moral stories, or is the Bible the inspired, the authoritative word of God? And if it is the authoritative word of God, then does that matter when suddenly it says there are some things that are right and some things that are wrong? Dear friends, those questions find their way into our heart, into our lives every day as the Word of God really does speak to us, telling us that while the world changes, the truth of God does not change, that there are things that are right, there are things that are wrong, and doing things that are wrong are not going to end well. Still, I think it gets a bit deeper than that. Look closely at those religious leaders for a moment. 
They come up to Jesus, and I am certain of this, they are not looking for some answer, some teaching. No, what they're looking to do is to put Jesus in his place. Let's not forget, at that moment, at that time, in that place, those religious leaders, those priests, those elders, they were the authority. They had authority, and they liked it that way. And soon and very soon in this week of Jesus' life, we'll discover just what they were willing to do to hold on to their authority. A simple word for it is the word ambition. My friends, we also know all about ambition. We know what it feels like to want things the way that we want them to be. We know how it makes us feel. Maybe how we might react if someone begins to sort of rock the boat of our comfort zones or get in the way of the things that we desire. Martin Luther said it very well. He said that actually the problem here of ambition is that ambition is the mother of all heresy. The more we desire the things that we want, the more we desire, like those religious leaders, to come to Jesus, but to do so on our terms, the more we begin to chisel away, little by little, Jesus Christ and his authority in our life. But as we do that, we must remember we're doing that, we're chiseling away the very hope on which we stand. So what will Jesus do about it? What did Jesus do about it? He came here to this earth. Jesus came to the manger in Bethlehem. As a young adult, he did travel out there by the Jordan that day where John had just proclaimed, after me comes one mightier than I am. And in the Gospel of John, we hear these words. John the baptizer says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus traveled then into Jerusalem, knowing what was going to happen to him. He traveled to the upper room. He traveled to a garden. And there in that garden, it looked as if those chief priests, those elders, were going to have the last word when they arranged to have him arrested, to have him sentenced, and finally sent to a cross. Please remember, though, Jesus did not go to the cross because they desired it. Incredibly, earth-shakingly, he went because he desired it, because that's how much he loves you. On the cross, you might say, Jesus took his stand. Or to put it another way, on the cross, Jesus stood in our place all the way into death. Last week, we marveled. We marveled at our God that likes to turn things upside down, to do things in unexpected ways. What is more unexpected than Jesus willingly dying on the cross? What is more unexpected? Then God the Father changing the world by giving his Son life again. Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection is the source of our life. Jesus spoke with authority in the temple that day. He continues to speak with authority today, authority that we can count on absolutely. With authority, he assures you and me today that our sins are forgiven. Authority assures us that he loves us with authority assures us that we belong to him Jesus continues to speak with authority when he comes to us in the waters of our baptism and calls us by name and Promises that he'll be at work in our lives every single day until we see him face to face With authority Jesus says take and eat. This is my body Take and drink. This is my blood for the forgiveness of your sins, for the strengthening of your faith, for your salvation. It is with authority that Jesus says these amazing words in Matthew chapter 28. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
And in that same passage, Jesus says to you and me now, I am with you always to the very end of the age. In this time, as many of us continue to feel isolation and long for a few more things, maybe to get more normal, there is loneliness in this time. And Jesus promises us in him, we are never, ever alone. One more thing about Jesus' authority. All authority in heaven and on earth. This is one of those statements we can depend upon. One of those really, truly statements that reminds us of something so important to hold on to today. The certainty that our God has never and will never lose control of his creation. He is at work right now. Nothing in our world, nothing on the news, nothing going on in your life will ever change that. I want to give you something very specific to pray about this week. To me, one of the most powerful things in this passage, we could almost miss it. In verse 27, remember those religious leaders said to Jesus, we don't know. Of course, what they were really saying is we don't know what answer to give so that we can win our case. They were also saying something else. We don't know. We don't know who Jesus is. We don't know him as our Savior. My friends, today in your prayers, I would like you to offer a prayer of thanksgiving that you do know. That you remember Jesus said that, his desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Thank God for the gift of faith he gives you. And as you do that, I'd like you to think a little bit more. You know because someone told you. Maybe it was your parents or your grandparents or a pastor or Sunday school teachers or a DCE out there or maybe a good friend or maybe it happened after you were married. Someone took the time to share with you the hope that is in them. I would like you to thank God for that person or those people in your prayers this week. And by the way, if they're still with us, why not let them know they've made a difference in your life. I promise you'll both be blessed. Of course, I'd like you to take that one step further. Every one of us knows someone that does not know, that does not know the hope that we have, the salvation we have in Jesus Christ. I would like to ask you to pray for that person or for those people that God places on your heart and pray that maybe he would give you the circumstance or the words or the opportunity so you could say something that sounds like this. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Today, Jesus speaks with authority. His authority we can depend upon absolutely. And one more thing he says with authority. Behold, I am coming again soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together now confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We go to God in prayer today. During our time of prayer, we'll also take some time in silence for you to raise the prayers of your own hearts and minds as well. O oh Lord, we are your people, chosen by your grace to be your own possession and granted mercy upon mercy. Hear your people as we call out to you in need and remember us according to the favor you have shown us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lead us to know and to grow in your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in the path of salvation made known in your word. Hear our complaints and quiet them by your merciful deliverance that we may respond with trust and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Encourage us, O Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that we may not lose heart, but being of one mind and one will, may serve you with gladness, doing the works of your kingdom, and speaking your word of witness throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O Lord, to hold fast to your word and bless us with faithful church workers who will preach and teach your eternal gospel, that we may rejoice in doing your will. Guide those who are considering church work vocations and bless them as their form for your service. We pray today for our mission partners in the U.S. and all around the world. We pray for the pastors and people of Zion Lutheran Church, Hubble, Nebraska, of Zion Lutheran Church, Guthrie, Oklahoma, of Calvary Lutheran Church, Jacksonville, North Carolina, of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Georgia, Caucasus region, and at the Kaiserslautern Evangelical Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and your mercy grant healing, comfort, and peace to all those who suffer. Deliver them from their afflictions, pain, sorrow, and fear. We pray for all those whose lives have been impacted by the coronavirus in so many ways, especially those we may know personally. We pray for all those in need. We pray for Karen, Lou, Diane, Melissa, Barbara, Myra, Sunanda, Harriet, Ruth, Suze, Alexandra, Maria, Sheila, Johan, Glenn, Elaine, and their family, Andreas and his family, Martha, Rolf, Melody, Zubin, Hannah, Hazen, and all those we name now before you in a moment of silence. We ask your blessing today also on Winston and Johanna as they're traveling back to India tomorrow. Keep them safe and bless their homecoming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide us, O Lord, with all our hearts, minds, and bodies, and resources to serve you. Give special blessing to Lutheran Women's Missionary League and to the many ways they bring the good news of your salvation and the works of your love across our nation and world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us with all that we need to support our bodies and lives, gifts from your hand. Lead us to be generous in the support of the work of your kingdom with our tithes and our offerings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O Lord, to remember the faithful who loved and served you and who now rest from their labors. Bring us with them that most blessed day when together we shall dwell in your presence on high forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us all good things profitable for our life and salvation, and keep us from all things harmful, that sustained in time of want and guarded in time of prosperity, we look forward to the day of our Lord's coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We take a moment now to share the peace with one another. We encourage you to share the peace of the Lord with each other at home as well. Peace to the Lord. Peace to the Lord. Peace to the Lord. We take a moment now to remember the gifts that God gives us every day. As many of us are still staying home at the moment, I want to encourage you please to take advantage of online forms of giving. There's information about that at the end of our video today or also in the bulletin you should have received by email. It'll direct you to the homepage of our website and you can go on from there. As you think about the gifts God gives you today, again, be specific. Think of something that made a difference in your life this week and be sure to tell someone about that. We take a moment now in silence to reflect upon all of God's generous gifts. Please pray with me. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us that we may be a blessing to others. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We now sing our final hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We wish you a very blessed week in the Lord.